Good evening and welcome to this July 16th, 2018 regularly scheduled meeting of the Midland Public Schools Board of Education. At this time, if everyone would please turn off their cell phones so we don't have interference with our um, TV feed, I would appreciate it. And then if everyone would stand and please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, at this time I'll ask Scott to do roll call, please. Okay, President Singer, I believe is absent. Vice President Branstad. Here. Treasurer Frizee. Here. Member Baker. Here. Member Blazy. Here. Member Friedel. Here. Okay, we have a quorum. Excellent. Moving into item two, which is our consent agenda, as printed in the um, agenda. 2.1 is approval of the minutes from our June 25th regular meeting. 2.2 are the following persons who have been recommended for employment for the 2018-19 school year. 2.3 is a couple administrators who are recommended for employment for the 2018... And Angela, we have them both here tonight. Oh, excellent. If you'd like to recognize them. All Al right. Allison is here, and as well as Matt is here, both. Excellent. And if you'd like to say anything, you're always allowed <laughs> to. If, if not, that's fine, and they get to see your face. But yes. Okay. My name is Allison Cicinelli. I'm coming from Saginaw ISD, and I can't tell you how excited I am to start my 17th year in education at Midland Public Schools. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I can't tell you how excited I am to be here. Welcome. All right, welcome. 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 Pressure. <laughs> uh, I'm Matt Murphy. Um, I am starting year 13, uh, and I'm coming home to Midland Public Schools, which is where my parents went, which is where I went, which is where my kids will go. Uh, I'm really grateful for the opportunities I had in Mount Pleasant, um, but I am extremely excited to be home, so thank you so much. Welcome. 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 Home, Thanks. See, he's wearing his Dow High Green. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving in, um, continuing with the consent agenda, 2.4 are the following staff members who have announced their resignation. 2.5 is the 2018-19 district school improvement plans. 2.6 is adoption of Midland School Code Articles 105 and 105C, which is our schools of choice. 2.7 is approval of the payment of the school system's bills for the month of June. And 2.8 is legal invoices for payment. At this time, I will accept a motion. A move we approve consent agenda items 2.1 through 2.8 as written. Support. All right, move by Scott, support by Lynn. Is there any discussion? I just had a quick question. Um, Obviously, we need to pay our bills. No question on that. Um, we have it in here, and but I looked uh, last year, and we didn't actually do the approval until the financials were ready in August. Is, is same. That, right, no it's the same. There are no bills, so um, we kind of tried to say that for you. The uh, June financials will not be available for approval until the August Board of Education meeting. Okay, so we're not approving to pay anything just to, at that point in time we will? Correct. It'll be on an August 1, plus you have the um, current bond executive summary report we wanted you to know. So it was a placeholder to have that in there. Okay, that's fine. All right. Yep. Are there any other questions? All right. Seeing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Moving into item, um, agenda item 3, 3.1 is for action, our 2018-19 tax resolution for the 2018-19 tax collection. Bob. Okay, first item I have for you is the tax resolution for 18-19 tax collection. As you know, when you set the budget back in June, you establish the millage rates that, that go out to the public, um, in particular 18 mills on non-homestead, uh, 1.6814 on our Hold Harmless, or the one on the Principal Residence Qualified Agricultural Enforced, and then the 2.72 for the uh, bond that we passed. Um, we typically have brought this to you in September, but the county especially 
has asked if we could do this sooner because, as you know, in your packet you had both a resolution and there's a form in there that the state gets and goes to the counties, uh, an L4029. And while legally we can wait till September 30th to turn that in, they, of course, would like to have that a little bit earlier so they can get their tax bills ready both in the county and um, in the city. So you'll notice if you look at that, you'll see how we split the tax rate in the city, and you'll see what they pay out in, in the county. So it's more of a technicality to go along with your uh, board-approved budget. These are the millage rates that would go along with that. So it would require you to... Vote typically on tax issues. We do a roll call <clears throat> vote, and then it would be signed then by um, board president or vice president in this case and the secretary. All right, excellent. So at this time, I will entertain a motion. I move to approve the certification resolution for the 2018 19 fiscal year taxes. A complete copy of the resolution shall be attached to the original of these minutes. All right, moved by Mary. Support. Support by Patrick. Is there any discussion? All right, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Roll aye. Roll aye. Roll call. Oh, roll. roll call. I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> You're right, like, made sure you knew that beforehand. <laughs> President Singer is absent. Vice President Branson. Yes. Treasurer Frizee. Yes. Member Baker. Yes. Member Blazy. Yes. Member Friedel. Yes. I also vote yes. Six yes votes, one absent. All right, thank you very much. <clears throat> All right, moving into item 3.2, another item for action, the transportation automated bus, bus wash purchase. As you know, as we start a new budget year, some of these things we like to, we've budgeted for, and we like to get them purchased right away so we get the full use out of them. This is an automated bus wash. Uh, currently, well, we have partially automated equipment. We wash much of the buses by hand. Uh, and you know in Michigan, not the greatest thing to have happen. And the more we can wash them, the longer they last. So we did put this out for bid. Um, we're recommending that you award this to the only bidder, which is Central Cleaning Systems of Saginaw. The total price was $28,930. Um, we did, uh, it's got a uh, retro into our existing bus wash. If they're building it from scratch, they can of course build a building around it, they can bury things underground, et cetera. Well, you can't do that here. We have a bay so big, mm -hmm. and so the equipment was somewhat specialized in where it had to fit. While well, we had two companies that did walk the uh, installation area to look at it, um, and we did put it out in the statewide bid system, we just got the uh, single bid. Um, I think the two companies that walked it were both going to use the same equipment. And so, of course, when one's coming from New York and one's in Saginaw, um, I think the New York person knew that that would be tough to to match their costs. So we're recommending uh, the purchase of the automated bus wash system. All right, at this time, I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve item 3.2. All right, moved by Scott. Support. Support by Patrick. Is there any discussion? Typically, how long does a bus washer last? Um, if we take care of it, I would hope a long time. Uh, there's not really a lifespan on them as far as an exact time. Um, it really is how you treat the equipment and if you stay on top of it. We've been pretty good and our mechanics have been pretty excellent with anything back there. So I would hope with minor repairs it could last us a good 10 years. Okay. Um, I'm going to guess there's parts that will have to be replaced along the way depending on, on you know, I'm, I'm guessing maybe some of the underbus stuff might go before, let's say, the side washes will go. Okay. All right. Are there any other questions? All right, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Moving into item 3.3 .3 for action, media center fur furniture purchases for Chestnut Hill and Seabird. Back to you, Bob. Okay, and I know you took uh, a tour, some of you did yes. a little bit earlier, and of course they're just, uh, we had a little better building season through the spring this time, and so instead of uh, that kind of Christmas turnover of time, it's actually January. Uh, in the last two schools, they're looking earlier, and of course, if they can get to everything earlier, I have to have the furniture here because it's not good to have a media center with nothing in it. Um, so this is uh, following the same design work that we've done at the other buildings. Uh, this would get us the media center furniture. I brought the uh, cafeteria tables at the last board meeting, and in August, I'll bring the maker spaces mm -hmm. for these two schools. Um, this one priced very nicely compared to the other two. In fact, a little bit lower than the earlier ones. 
just the right combination and, and the prices stayed <clears> very <throat> consistent. And you'll see uh, the total that we're asking for approval with Duell, who we've been working with on the media centers, $134,818.40. And I did try to put in the board pack this time a couple of the drawings so you could at least get an idea. Mm -hmm. Sometimes until you see it, it's hard to, to realize how they're changing. And we have gotten very good feedback on all the other completed media centers. The two that we just did at Plymouth and Woodcrest have been very popular. We try to mimic the things that are most popular out there. So if there's a piece there, like uh, the tiered seating, we've been trying to do more of the tiered seating. The kids love that in the, in the media center. And we've also been trying to adjust based on how we're actually, um, uh, the furniture guys will come in and, and tell you how much storage you need for the book collections there are. But then they come back through and look at our, our buildings we've done to see what that actually amounted to. Are we really using all the space or are we way over capacity and have empty shelves? And they try to help us adjust as we go forward too. So all those things I think are helping us uh, keep this in, in budget as we go forward. So we would recommend the approval of that tonight. All right, thank you. I will entertain a motion. So moved. All right, moved by Mary. Support. Support by Lynn. Is there any discussion? It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. it's, it's such an ideal space for the kids to uh, work in. Yeah, I know I was commenting today when we went into Seabird's gym, how I've been there. I have voted there all the time and, you know, have been there when my daughters played basketball and it just seems so large today. So it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful space, like you said. Any other questions or comments? All right, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Moving into item 3.4 for action, high school maintenance vehicle purchases. Yes, um. it is. We, these are utility vehicles that we're purchasing. So you would think of them, and I think you can see by the write-up that one's a John Deere tractor, the other one is a Bobcat 4x4 diesel. Um, we do have utility vehicles in the sense of 4x4 Toros that are used to transport things from the high school, but they don't have the capabilities for snow blowing, sweeping, uh, fertilizing, et cetera, spreading salt, uh, those kinds of things. And so we've always planned, as we've told you, with uh, some of the general fund to start upgrading some of those. And our, let's face it, our two high schools are big areas to take care of. Mm -hmm. um, and even now, we either have to wait and bring something over from the district to do all the sidewalks, let's say, around Midland High, or we have to use heavier equipment at Dow High up on the uh, cement that goes around the cafeteria. None of that's good for, mm -hmm. for those areas. So these two purchases, and we would have went with the same ones in both, except uh, Middle High has so much sidewalk of a typical width that the Bobcat's wider than that. And while you can buy a smaller blade for the Bobcat or a snowblower so it fits the side, the tires would still be over, which means I'd be stuck spinning my wheels trying to get on it. So the John Deere tractor uh, we chose for Midland High. It's the same one that we purchased over at Central Park and are using for a multitude of reasons. And then the Bobcat at Dow High, where we have more wide open areas, the sidewalk, they have less city sidewalk to be concerned about with that width. Uh, both of them will be improvement over um, the Bobcat that we currently own that has the blade on it, because I'm sure you've gone by sometimes where it's a little wide, and so once in a while we're pulling up sod alongside the sidewalks. It might be good, might be edging without us knowing it, but, <laughs> but it really is not what we want to do. So these two vehicles, and in addition, um, like the Bobcat, will have the ability to um, move things around, and we can take one of those Toros then and use it someplace else. At Midland High, the John Deere tractor doesn't really have that, so we'll want to leave that four by four Toro there too so that they can use it. But it does allow us then to maybe move one of those Toros onto the middle school. We did have this in the budget for this year, okay. out of the maintenance Great. fund. Excellent, thanks for the explanation. All right, at this time I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve item 3.4. All right. Support. Moved by Pat or moved by Scott, support by Patrick. Is there any discussion? Bob, do we have any other of the Bobcat style? And it's a great machine. I, I know a lot about it, but do we have any others like that in our I'm gonna, maintenance fleet? I'm going to take a quick look at Mike Muggerberg. I don't think we have any like that, right? We, we have a Bobcat that we bought from the city. Yes, we bought a Bobcat from the city, but we do not have any. The Toro are only two-wheel drives. So right. That's why we had to switch out. This is kind of our first experience with the Bobcat. And the reason we looked at this is because it's hydrostatic. It's not like your uh, driven one with a belt. It's mm -hmm. hydrostatic, so it's it's safer for our guys 
they can only go so fast with it and plus it has the PTO both in front and rear PTO so that's a lot better for snow blowing and you're shaft driven so you're not breaking stuff for it's more of a commercial unit than your re regular residential so did we think about doing <coughs> John Deere for that site as well just to have the crossover of all all the implements and then kind of one vendor to handle Midland High, Dow High, and CP? Or was it? It's just, it's, we, we'd actually have to, we'd have to get a bigger John Deere tractor for Dow High. It, we so then the, attach the, would the, the attachments potentially wouldn't cross over? Then, then? they wouldn't cross over, no. It, it's, it'd be pretty small for how much sidewalk we've got at Dow High to do that. And that's kind of why we went with this with PTO and hydrostatic. It, it'll cover more area. It's a lot quicker. And we can multi-use it. We can use it. We can get rid of the side-by-side uh, -side that's there and use it someplace else. It would have been actually nice to have two bobcats, but it's just not practical. Okay. Then we could use one machine at one site instead of two machines at one site. Okay. I was just thinking of crossover of implements and that kind of stuff since we have two others, but if it's not the right fit, I understand. Yeah, I had actually contacted Bob earlier when I saw that in the um, agenda and asked him the same thing. So I was curious why we were buying two different ones, and he did a great job before I'm, the meeting of explaining that. I'm just glad that, that we're making their job easier and safer. Oh. Yeah, actually, is, um, from just to let you know how far it is for a sidewalk, it's a quarter mile from the uh, stadium mm -hmm. to go all, at Midland High to go all the way over to Parkdale side. Mm -hmm. It's a quarter mile, and they were doing that a lot of that with snowblowers. That's, so yeah. That's, that's a long walk. Yeah. <laughs> in deep snow sometimes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And Very make, early in the morning. It quicker and it'll make it safer for the kids. We can get on yeah. it quicker and it won't take so much time to do it. Yeah. I appreciate it's it. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Are there any other questions? All right. Seeing none at this time, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Moving into item 3.5, another for action the Never Wear Cloud Ready Chrome OS software. Back right. to you, Bob. Okay. Um, <laughs> I knew there was a lot on here. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a software that we can purchase. And as you know, our middle schools are using laptops. Mm -hmm. And we are, if you remember at the last meeting, going to buy, um, because the project lead the way, some Chromebooks for the sixth grades when they come in. Uh, that still leaves us with laptops in seventh and eighth grade. Um, this is a software solution. And Dave's going to correct me any place I go wrong here. This is a software solution for those laptops that, that makes them or has them work like Chromebooks then. There are two major advantages to that. One is if we do that, you can extend the life of those laptops a lot longer than you can window machines when we switch them over. The other thing is they'll be able to configure them then so that 7th and 8th grade students could take those laptops home, mm -hmm. which has been a big, if you've had anybody in there, one of the biggest drawbacks is they weren't able to take the laptops home because we couldn't put the proper protection on it uh, to do what they needed to do if we were going to send them home. Um, it's more of a cost up front. While there's an annual cost closer to the number of students you have in the district, so closer to 7,000, 7,500, someplace in there. Um, but we do see that would extend the use, and even if we were in, in the near future or someplace down the road to buy, let's say, um, Chromebooks for 7th grade or 8th grade, it would also allow us to keep those machines in district used as Chromebooks, and maybe that would give us the additional machines to put out, let's say, in a building for the paraprofessional staff to have access to. So there's lots of uses for these laptops, and we, we looked at this. We thought it would be an economical way to extend their life and also get those 7th and 8th graders to be able to use them both in school and at home. So we're recommending the price for the software proprietary. They're the only people that make them through the state bid site here, $28,800 um, to do that. All right. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. I move to approve item 3.5. All right. Thank Four. you, Scott. Moved by Scott. Support by Patrick. Is there any discussion? I think it's important that the 7th and 8th graders do have that opportunity. The 6th grade is going to be able to take theirs home. It just seems kind of strange that, oh, you're in, now in 7th grade, you can't, but you could in 6th grade, so it makes sense. Yeah. Do we have to worry about, are these, do our laptops have batteries? So are we going to have to update those later on? Because I they, know they only last so They do. Long. I guess I'd ask you, Dave, um, 
I think we've been doing that as we've had to as the life's. We, we do replace them as we need to. The, the laptop batteries for the middle school devices are actually replaceable. The Chromebooks are not. Okay. Well, they are, but not easily. So, um, but we do replace them we, uh, maybe a few hundred every year. So, and we, when we do replace them, we buy extended life batteries too to make sure that they get more, more battery time out of them. Okay. <coughs> Thanks. All right. Are there any other questions? All right. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Moving into our last item, number three, 3.6 for Action District Digital Radio Communication System. Well, as you know, we've been bringing the digital radio systems to you since the start of the year when we put them on the buses. And I know you've expressed interest in, can we push this along? And you know we did move some money over to the capital improvement funds to, to do that. doesn't mean that I'm not still looking for grants out there uh, that may or may not exist at this time. The, the state police one went away a year, so we couldn't do that. So we're looking at it, but we can and do have budgeted for this complete system. And in real quick terms here, what you're seeing is just a breakdown of the different parts to this. So we did have six more that we needed for buses. That would take care of even all the sub buses we have, which makes sense. We want that digital radio system on all the buses that we have. Um, it would give us 10 base stations. Remember, we tried at Central Park this year a base station and eight handhelds within the building for a communication system instead of the system of walkie-talkies that weren't really interconnected as we go. So we'd need 10 more to finish off our buildings. Uh, the 76 handhelds you see there are exactly that. They're handheld units, um, and that gives about eight per school, though we, we did put, uh, I think it was three or four in there for the new pre-primary center. So we'd have that same digital connection. Um, and then finally, it's really the bottom part that's the big part there. They call it turbo, but the TRBO plus core system. That will allow us, and remember right now we're renting GPS tower space from Motorola, which we wouldn't have to do anymore. It would give us the ability to put 70 GPS licenses out there and monitor where our vehicles are located. Of course, we'd put those on all the buses, and we, we could put them other places too. Um, it allows you to have three dis dispatch locations right through a computer. So it's literally, you know, where we designate them is where they can be. Um, it does give us a dedicated server, so we're not on any of the computer that currently exists. It sits by itself with its own battery backup. So it's another way with our safety and security that even if the computer systems were to go down, we'd have at least eight hours of battery backup to run that system to communicate with. Um, it does come with phone connectivity, which <coughs> means you can program, I'd call it an emergency button on the handheld, so you could call 911 just with the press and phone out. You could program other things, but you know, you could program on those handhelds. Uh, it does give us 30, and it's kind of, uh, as, as uh, uh, Mr. Belize had talked about before, it's not the wave, because the wave is a much bigger uh, program, but it's the same idea. It gives us 30 iPhones or Android apps that we can put on. So that's, for example, uh, Mike wouldn't need to have a, you know nine different radios on his belt. He could have it on his phone and use the same app that way. It uh, gives us multiple channels, so you can correspond between, not with just in a building, but between our maintenance and our buses and whoever, just by switching channels. Um, it integrates with our routing software. That'll take us a little while, but we hope to be up and having, so that we can have our parents in the community um, go to the website and tell what route they're on and eventually be able to tell where their bus is um, by logging in. That'll take us a little bit more time to do that. And hopefully down the road, as technology increases, we might get to the ability to scan kids in when they get on our buses so we know exactly they're still on, they're not on, uh, which we'd like to do. The battery backup's there. Uh, there's lots of support that comes with this installation of programming. It has a five-year um, uh, software upgrades are free for five years, so it would bring us all together. The total cost, when you put that all together, $188,244.28. And we're, administration is recommending that we do that purchase. Uh, talking to the company, they think that they could have us pretty much set up by the start of school. Now, that's a tall order, but we'd work as fast as we could to make sure. And Marky's starting with all the buses and work our way from there. All right. Thank you for the explanation. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve item 3.6. All right. Support. Moved by Patrick, support by Mary. Is there any discussion? 
was really glad to see this on the agenda and that we're wrapping up a complete system as much as we can. Communication, as we all know, is very critical, and this puts us, I think, on the cutting edge. And more importantly, it gives us, like you said, Bob, the tremendous ability to expand. Mm -hmm. um, as products develop, we can mm -hmm. integrate, sounds like, pretty seamlessly. Uh, so I'm, I'm a big fan of this, and I'm glad to see it tonight. Thank you for putting it together. Any other discussion? Another step in securing the safety of our students for the district. It started last year with secure entrances, and now mm -hmm. with radios, it's public should know that another step towards keeping things secure. All right. All right. Any other comments? All right. Seeing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Moving into agenda item four, request to address the board. I don't have any listed here. Have we had any? Okay. Is there anybody who would like to address the board tonight? All right. Seeing none, we will move into agenda item five, which is our finance facilities and operations. Um, let's see. I believe there wasn't a meeting since our last meeting. So we will move right to 5.1, which is for information. Gifts totaling $7,000. $15.85. Did you want to review or you want me to? Yeah, just real quick, there are nine of them, and uh, as you see, there's a couple for maybe things that you don't traditionally think about, like the trap shoot team and <laughs> um, BPA got some money for conferences, mm -hmm. end of the year party, robotics from different places out there. The other part I'd point out to you, oh, and also, excuse me, the $400 for the sixth grade wildlife recovery program from JPAC, and then as always, the community gives our our, especially our athletic teams are constantly mm -hmm. uh, doing that, which is uh, it's a prime time for them to be out there. They must do something in the community that gives to the community, and then they get the money back through the Community Foundation, which is really funded through the Dow Chemicals. So it's, uh, it's a nice program, and you'll see some of our teams are already up and, and working their way through those. So, again, it's always a pleasure to bring those to you. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, I like that community gifts. I know my kids have gotten mm -hmm. to participate in some of those volunteer activities. All right, moving into item six, which is human resources. Okay, the board and staff extend their deepest sympathy to the family of Miss Connie Caldwell, who taught special education at Jefferson Middle School for eight years, retiring in 2010. It's very sad. I don't know who Connie was. And the following staff member, Shannon Roller, special education teacher from Adams Elementary, announced her retirement as of June 15th, 2018. All right, thank you very much. Uh -huh. All right, moving into item eight, which is correspondence to and from the Board of Education, as noted in the agenda. Um, item nine is scheduled activities. Just to note, our next regular meeting will be August 20th, 2018. Last one before school starts. And at this time, we'll, we will move into a, our study discussion section. So I will start with you, Brad. Uh, just happy to see the uh, completion of the district digital radio communication system. I think that's great. I think it's a great upgrade for us and excited to get that done and hopefully they uh, can get as much done before school starts as possible. Um, I had one other item um, in the May meeting. Um, I had expressed some concern of when I had reached out to some contractors um, there's been some contact to me because I run in the same circles as those contractors at job sites, job walkthroughs, all those types of things, as well as I've uh, been contacted at my office that um, still not getting paid in the 45 to 60 days. And I just wanted to bring that to your attention to see if there's something we can do to improve that. The last discussion we had on, on payment is there's been everyone's been paid 45 to 60 days who's met their paperwork. So there are, um, my understanding is been a contractor too that uh, Barn Mel has mentioned, um, and I've seen some correspondences to them where, where it was a lack of, it was not reports coming from their side is the reason they didn't continue on some of the payments they were held. But I will look into it, but there, that was, they, they were doing what we want them to do, which was hold the money until they had the proper paperwork in. Mike, if I could add, we did go to, um, after you mentioned that, we were working on um, our payment to Byron Mallow as electronic as opposed to, as you know, our 
if you, you know how this works, if you pay it non-electronically, it's five days to them, then five days, and it just keeps adding days. So we did go to an electronic payment to Bart and Mallow so that on our side, at least, uh, we cut it there. But if you can, you know, just if you give me any of the, the companies, I'll try to follow up with Bart and Mallow to see if there's anything in particular that's that's out there that's being held up. I, I don't recall any recently. Director Marway, we'll look into them, but we'll, we'll ask again. But, that, yeah, that was the last discussion. Okay. And as a side note to that, that the, the contract is the Midland Public School contract. I know we have a contract with Barton Mallow, but each individual contractor is contracted by the Midland Public Schools. That's correct. Okay. That's a GM. I'm, I'm all set. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. to me. Patrick. Um, congrats to the two new hires retiring, Allison and Matt. Um, I know I've known Matt personally for years. And it's always great to hire somebody with a passion who wants to be with the school, and I think they'll be a great asset to Dow High. I'm happy for both of you guys and gals. Um, I wasn't at the tours tonight, but I, I live right next to Chester Hill, and I walked it a bunch this weekend. And it, it's I know it's going to get done because I watched them do it at Plymouth and, and Woodcrest last year, but... It is daunting <laughs> to see where things are right now and where it will be in the fall. Uh, impressive at the amount of work that will be done. Uh, I look forward to seeing it in the fall with, with my kids. And that's it for me. All right, thanks, Scott. I like the 30-minute meetings, but I kind of miss the kids. Yeah, I thought it was a great meeting tonight. I like that we're still charging forward even in the summer. Um, a lot of action items tonight got approved. I was um, encouraging and, and the public should be encouraged by that just to know that we're moving forward on what we said we're going to do. So um, that being said, that's all I have to comment tonight. Right. Well, I too would like to welcome Allison and Matt and uh, to Midland. And Matt knows I'll probably say something like this. I remember Matt playing hockey with my boys and <laughs> sitting with his mom and dad on the, the old ice arena bleachers. So welcome back, Matt. It's just hard for me as a mom to see one of our kids sitting out there as an assistant principal, so <laughs> I know he'll do a great job. Uh, the tours today at Chestnut Hill and Siebert were really fun. It's just amazing what they've accomplished in a month's time. You think school was out mm -hmm. June 13th, and today's only, what, the 16th, and so they have four to six weeks. So as you said, it's daunting to see what it looks like, but it's pretty amazing what they've done, and you know, inside and outside. So I think... Uh, families, parents, teachers, the kids are going to be really excited when they go back. Um, and everybody's been busy here, but um, as, they, as they always are, but enjoy the rest of the summer. I, I too went on the tour of the facilities, and it, it's really wonderful to see our bond monies at work, and not only improving and making think places, the, the, the classroom spaces and the overall um, appearances of the buildings uh, look great, but also incorporating some of the old mm -hmm. and maintaining it and using it in a new way is just uh, fantastic. And part of the legacy of what Midland Public Schools is about, we've always done things uh, as far as excellence, and um, it's nice to see that we're maintaining that excellence in the new uh, facilities that are being added on to. All right, well, I... I are you done? I'm sorry. Yep. <laughs> I too went on the on the tour tonight, and um, it was great. And I mean, since we've done Central Park, and then last summer we did a couple more elementary schools. So today, when you go into two elementary schools, you kind of you have an expectation because we know what we're doing in each one of these schools, and we're really doing pretty much the same in every single school. So you go in, and you're like, yes, you know. They're putting in the air conditioning units. They're replacing all the windows. They have the doors are all out, and they're getting ready to put new doors. Sometimes, you know, they have to put new insets in. The, you know, flooring's all up, but, you know, it's you kind of have this expectation, and it's great. We go and we see these gyms, and it's like, yep, this is the same. You know, we're using the same design. There's the stage. There's the gym. There's the cafeteria. There's the kitchen. So it's, it's really nice that we are. We're going through every building, building by building, these elementary schools, and really giving them very, you know, here's the maker space here's where the new media center is going to be and like tonight we ordered you know they're, they're all going to be very similar in that way but like mary said there are certain elements when we go in that we're able to keep some of the you know historic of what the school is and so. it, it was interesting too that that you know they were showing us even where they start tearing apart the walls mm -hmm. and could see what great construction there was to mm -hmm. start with and 
things that they hadn't anticipated. Yes. You know, that, uh, well, this was all reinforced, and, and they had, they, you know, just a heck of a job trying to get it back out. Mm -hmm. So, and yet they're still ahead of schedule, which is pretty amazing. Yes. And then I was, um, I don't know, sometime in the last couple of weeks I was out walking, and even though we're all involved with these two schools, they have the um, back part of Adams was all staked out. Um, so I was like, oh, here's, you know, we're already working on next summer's um, projects. So that was, that was exciting to see, too. Um, welcome, Allison and Matt. So um, we just left Dow High. Otherwise, you would have had my, potentially had my children. Um, so welcome to both of you. Really glad that you're joining uh, Midland Public Schools. And the last thing is just to remind everyone to go out and vote. August 7th, the enhancement millage. This is, is the third renewal, I think, of this millage. And um, this is a countywide millage. Um, this is one of the, the only ways we have to um, raise additional funds. We have to do it by county. And so this will be the third um, renew. Well, I guess the second renewal of the enhancement millage. But it is a renewal, just to um, really stress that to people. And with that, I will turn it over to you, Mike. Since we've been talking about construction, hey Mike, um, are we going to advertise for that? In do we already for that election that's coming up? Is that something we would advertise for, or can we? To so we'll do the communique, special yes. community. Yep. So I've already been out on the circuit, which yep. I've wrote, so I've still got four or five more timely presentations as we get closer. Part of it's not going out too soon, as you know, right, this is right. going to be an easy one for people to forget, right. um, being in August. And yes, we can do some of that, but typically we use outside sources for advertisements. So school districts are very restricted mm -hmm. on using resources. So we'll use our normal communication system about um, reminder to vote for the renewal, not encouraging one way or the other. Um, but um, as, when you're talking about advertising, so advertising, we'll use our caller system to remind voters. We'll do a communique, which is um, scheduled to go out the end of July because we were kind of waiting with the timing of that. Um, we um, empowered um, retired staff. Rick Sheen might, might be getting an email real quick here. Uh, retired <laughs> staff, retired um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> retired board members, um, um, those to also to spread the word, as well as the other county school districts are doing this. And then um, we typically use outside funds for a true advertisement in the daily news. So, okay. So, yeah, there's a full plan in place. So, thank you. Yeah. Um, construction, so some of you asked me to bring this in, so I think yeah, it's the third or fourth award. Central Park is mm -hmm. one, and French and Burnt Mallow mentioned in that nice award um, for Central Park and the design and the construction at that one uh, as well. Um, while we're talking about construction, we can't forget about Dow High. Dow High is down without power this week. So if you recall, last summer we were dealing with a transformer issue, and that transformer had to be replaced and um, rebuilt, uh, uh, built from scratch, and so it's now time to do that. We've had, it, I think, the transformer for a while, but it, with the timing is now. And so it is um, being replaced at this point in time at Dow High, as well as um, reskinning the swimming pool. I guess you would def define that as, I huh, Mike. Um, so Dow High's got some work going on as well, going in there, as well as some of our other buildings do with our own general funds going through there. School safety initiatives, we talked about that, continue to work on that, continue to work with our county emergency providers, our, our educational expert. Some of the things we knew we still lacked after um, door access controls, video surveillance, and secure entrances was a good communication system and redundancy in the communication. So Bob mentioned digital radio, a powerful um, in an emergency situation as well. Um, we have um, been able to go through our National Superintendent Association to get a free piece of software um, called Crisis Go Alert, and we've talked about that where one message with an audible alert, with a verbal alert to every device on our system instantaneously is pretty powerful. Um, the movement towards ALICE, so ALICE is a alert, lockdown, inform, counter, evacuate. I always forget exactly what it stands for, um, but th that is a movement where we used to just shelter in place. Um, so we're going further with that, and our Midland PD have now been trained and are going to train our staff in that in the fall. And so we've got quite a few new initiatives going, something I want to continue to talk to you about as school resource officers. If this enhancement millage goes, um, I would like to sit down and talk to you about some of those funds possibly being used 
um, to get two additional for our middle schools and elementary coverage. Um, I've talked with the city and Chief Block. We have a meeting next week, um, not trying to be premature, but trying to make sure we get all the details for, for us so we're ready to talk to you about that if, if it's to go. We're trying to find the most economical way that still fits the safety of the police force with somebody on that. So I had mentioned retirees, and I'm not sure they're real keen on that or not, but that's something we're going to continue to work on. We'll come back with, to you about that. Summer school programs are up and going. Uh, hasn't always been a trend here in, in, in Midland Public. If you recall, um, the Chemic Challenge at Midland High, you had a presentation, oh, yeah. really started our initiative back up on some of that. They won an MASB Program of mm -hmm. Excellence Award for it. They're back at it. I think some good things are happening there. And we're using um, at-risk or title funds, Brian, um, both funds to blend, blend it together to offer them at the elementary level as well in those programs that we're going. All initiatives to close that achievement gap that we have and want to get all kids to reach to, a, to an efficiency level going forward. Um, the tours tonight were good. Um, as, we, as we know, we're kind of looking at some of the similar things, yeah. and so that each project can I think it goes a little smoother, a little easier. Some of the, mm -hmm. the issues go because we're doing similar projects at the elementary as we go. Um, the community foundation, our local community foundation, had asked us if we were willing to host the, the regional community foundation meeting for the year at Central Park. Um, they want to kind of show off the school and the collaboration effort that occurred between the foundations, our community, local people giving funds, all the things that occurred to make that uh, building a special place going forward. And the last one is our ACT scores. And, um, you know, we, we've always been a high-achieving district when it comes to standardized scores. SAT may be um, a, one we are encouraged a little more because it's a great predictor of college readiness. We want all our kids to be able to go there. Um, third year in a row that we've increased that score, and it's at all-time high uh, for, for Midland Public. And, and we're doing that, obviously, with um, a higher special ed population. And... Um, high needs students as well. So pretty impressive that we continue to move those scores up. And that's all I have for you. All right, thank you. Well, I guess at this time, I will accept a motion to end the meeting. So moved. All right, moved by Mary. Support. Oh, support by Patrick. I was like, I have to wait for this one. <laughs> all right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, all those opposed? All right, thank you everyone for coming out tonight.